Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. Here we have three options, and these options are for heavy duty power, um, 12 volt power, switching 12 volt power basically. So the first two options are options that I've used before. These ones here are commonly seen on the back of trucks and places where you might need to actually remove the key so that that way the power can't be activated. So they're good on hydraulic lifting doors, uh, sorry, tailgates that lift and things. You can also use them as a security device in your vehicle as well. You know, it's, old, it's old fashioned, but you can quite easily disconnect a terminal or a starter motor with something along these lines. These are This one here is actually rated to 500 amps continuous. So you can have 500 amps going through that continuous. A uh, normal car would, you know, you'd need 200 and it would only be uh, intermittent. Not continuous because the starter motor doesn't go on continuous, but you could even run it off your positive, you could run it off your negative. You can do a lot of funky things with this type of this type of switch. So that's one that I got today. Um, this one here I've used quite a lot and I've used them for turning on 12 volt power and also turning on um, you know 200 amp power to a volt especially in inverters in the back of cars um, so basically you just turn it and on turn it off big ring terminals on the back really secure um, really cheap too I think about 25 to 40 bucks a piece these ones again uh, probably about 25 to 30 bucks a piece so they're very very sort of cheap solutions for turning on high high amperage power so they're the two that I'm very familiar with um, but I recently picked up this one and this one's interesting because it's something completely different it looks like a flux capacitor um, kind of is in a way so this does the same thing as what this switch does here basically you've got your power on one side and your load on the other power on one side load on the other the only difference here is this is actually a solenoid so these come in a couple of different formats the first one here i've got is where power is applied and it connects those two terminals so that's one the next one you have is um, one that's not continuous cycle where it's only going to be used uh, for a short amount of time it works in the same configuration you apply power these two connect here so it is a relay. Um, the third one would be a latching relay, uh, which I wasn't able to get. Um, I was only able to get these ones where you apply power and then these two are connected. Even if this power drops, these two are connected. You apply power in reverse and then it, these two are disconnected. So that's a, a latching, latching relay. So my question is today, how much amps or how much power does something like this take to run? And I know what you're thinking. I was asking myself the same question. How many amps will that take to run? I mean, it's one of those questions nobody kind of asks anybody, but it's not out there so I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to grab my multimeter and we're going to we're going to do a check on it and now that I've got my new test lead see how nice and tidy that is negative and positive together I mean why hasn't somebody built that in the past um, yeah so I'm going to grab my amp meter and uh, put this across and see um, see how we go so there's our common and I'm going to see how many amps this will actually um, this will actually take okay range range DC I think we should be there. We should be there. Okay, so uh, these are not marked, so I'm guessing... Okay, so I've got all the settings right now. I'll put the multimeter on to, so you can see it. So basically, I've got my black terminal going straight to the battery. I've got my red terminal going to my uh, multimeter lead. And then that goes into the multimeter, comes out on the black terminal. So when I touch the battery, that will complete the circuit. And then we're going to know the, the question of the meaning of life. How many amps is this going to draw? Let's find out. 1.72 amps okay now why is that important well it means that if I have a 50 amp battery and I leave this on for 50 hours it's going to drain my battery down so would I use this over some of the others well just let's have a little look at this one bring that back so this one here is drawing one amp per hour this one here won't draw any amps per hour because it's just a dry contact when it touches it's just going to take the juice same with this one here so in certain scenarios, uh, like a locksmith van, I think you can get away with using this um, because most of the time you're only using it for about one to two hours at a time, really doesn't matter. In a motorhome setup, I think that that one hour accumulating would actually make some sort of difference. Um, most motorhomes, you know, generally um, anywhere from a 50 to a 500 amp battery. So if you're using up those amps and motorhomes, they run at 24 hours a day. So if you've got your fridge, this, that and the other on, it's an yet another amp, yet another bit of power that's being wasted that you have to reproduce. So in a motorhome setup, yes, it can be for a nice fancy thing, but it's going to be costly on the juice and that's going to cost you money one amp is not a lot of juice but in a locksmithing setup you could quite easily use one of these and you could run it off a very small type of switch so that might might be more convenient for you um, these ones here once again if you are building a, a truck with a lot of electronics and things i would go for this one here um, this one here is good maybe you 
might want to isolate the key machines or so they can't be turned on you could literally just remove the key and it's gone they're rated up to 500 amps continuously this one but a lot of the other ones come at about 200 amps continuously and these ones here are about i think 200 amps as well continuously i have run an inverter through one of these before and i have had it work for several years and not not be a problem but in recent times i've had one that actually um although it's turned off it's still actually connected so those ones there kind of um you, they can they can arc and and um, weld themselves together if you're pulling big big current so there are a couple of couple of different ways of uh, connecting it um, just to find out the amperage too that is a bit of an important one i'm not going to go through all the settings because uh, different multimeters things along those lines i've got it set to amp here i've got it set to dc and i've got it on a and i've got it on common why you'd probably want to check out the amps of what you're using in your vehicle is because to see that your cable is sufficient this uh, cable here i believe it's rated up to about 20 amps or maybe even 30 amps but if you don't have the right size cable in your car and you're pulling 20 amps through um, small cable you can actually burn the cable out and then it might short out on the vehicle blow fuses smoke and all sorts of stuff so it is worthwhile knowing how much each appliance actually pulls so then once you know how much the appliance is pulling you then can use appropriate cable to suit and you can also get your um, fuses and all the rest to suit so if it's running if it's pulling 20 amp you put a 25 amp fuse in there that should cover most things if it's only running 2 amps why not just put a 3 amp fuse in and that gives you the safety on um, on all your electrical circuits but as for this flux capacitor how good is it well it's good it works but in my scenario and what i'm putting it in i don't think i'll be using it i think i'm going to go for one that doesn't consume any power at all seems to be the smartest choice now that i know how much it pulls these are the test leads that we did in the previous video so um yeah that's just um the flux capacitor how much does it pull that much one amp well um you can't beat a switch and these switches here they're rock solid i've used them in all of my trucks so far and never had a problem these ones here i haven't normally used but they do make awesome kill switches if you're just looking at a way to you know put it in between the negative and uh or um, turn a starter motor off or something along those lines you can mount it through the floor bolt through all sorts of funky things and they're really really cheap anyway that's my video for today leave your comments down below and thanks for watching